Hello and welcome to the Underhive. We are back with some more How to Command the Death Guard. In this series, we're going to take a look at every aspect to the Death Guard. So whether you're looking to get more out of your army or you're thinking of joining Nurgle's Dirty Protest, then there's something here for you. In this episode, we're talking super heavy support for the Death Guard. So let's jump in and take a look at the big tanks with the big guns. Now, of course, the super heavy auxiliary detachment, you have got a good few selections in there. It's not all just big gun platforms. Something like the Mastodon, a huge transport, which does have some significant firepower, I find to be a very interesting unit for the likes of a narrative game. But in context of the way boards are laid out, in particular if you're talking about tournament terrain layouts, it is incredibly limiting for those sorts of vehicles to get around. And again, the Thunderhawk is, uh, sorry, the, is it Stormhawk or Stormbird or whichever it is, the real big, um, big plane. Ultimately, it doesn't feel very Death Guard to me. Even in the days of the Dusk Raiders, there aren't many accounts of use of gunships. Um, there certainly will have been gunship assaults, but not in the same way as we might ex expect from the likes of the Blood Angels, the likes of... Uh, even the Imperial Fists to an extent. So those sorts of, of big transports, whether they be flying or on the ground, firstly, don't really complement the way I play the game, but also don't feel terribly thematic to me. But I would, if I had one, love to play it in just a narrative game, some kind of, um, you know, either ambush where the opponent's in the middle and we fly in some big vehicles to sort of stop their convoy, or vice versa. I think a Mastodon and a few Rhinos could really go the way to tell that story of a Death Guard convoy being interrupted by an enemy force. Uh, but in terms of the Super Heavies I wanted to talk about here, we're talking about the big gun platforms, the likes of the Fellblade, Chaos equivalent of the Baneblade, and the Falchion, which is essentially a Titan killing tank. Now, in, in context of those particular options, what we're getting there is one big gun. Doesn't matter which one you want to go for, pick whichever one you feel is best. Personally, I prefer the gun on the Falchion, but there's nothing wrong with the Fellblade gun as well. You're getting either six laser destroyer shots, which is the one I prefer, uh, or eight last cannon shots. So the eight last cannons, of course, if you know if you push most of those through, the extra two shots you might have been glad of. But I prefer the six laser destroyers in that it's three plus D3 damage. So your minimum is four unless there's a minus one damage. But it's up to you. I just find that with last cannons, shooting into something like a dreadnought, you roll a two and it just feels terrible. At least with the laser destroyer, anything that gets through, even against minus one damage, it's dealing three. You've also then got six heavy bolter shots, which again are fine, but in the Age of Armour of Contempt kind of feel a bit lackluster, particularly with how strong sisters are at playing the game. Shooting them down with a strength five, essentially no AP, two damage weapon, feels both a waste on one hand and just terrible on the other. Just doesn't do enough at all. Um, of course, not all of the, the top four strong armies are Armour of Contempt. In fact, the other three aren't. But again, the Heavy Bolt profile to me just never seems to be in the spot it needs to be to really shine. Um, I'd love to see a bit of a glow up on the Heavy Bolters in, in future um, patches or future editions. And I would personally take the uh, Multi Melter on the front. So that brings the total cost of that vehicle up to 595 if you've got the Laser Destroyers and the Multi Melter. Uh, you would also have a two-up save with Armour of Contempt, so certainly quite durable with Toughness 8 as well. They've got the crushing tracks in melee, so when they're on the top bracket, you really don't want to tag them with much because they could smash up a relatively light infantry choice uh, fairly well. They have the ability to smoke screen, so this is definitely a point in the favour, so for a CP, you can make the minus one to hit. That seems great value for a unit that your opponent will want to target. You can also use the Unclean Machine Spirit in Death Guard, so you can make it act on top profile for one CP, which counteracts one of the biggest weaknesses of those two tanks, which is that they're incredibly susceptible to bracketing. When you've got all those weapons on one platform that hits on threes base, but can suddenly be hitting on fours or fives, it is nice to have that option, 
But needing to spend the CP in the game to do that does feel like a, an additional expense because you know your opponent's going to target it. They're not just going to leave it alone. Um, and the other side of the coin as well there is it is actually relatively slow by vehicle standards, only moving 10 inches and suddenly a lot less once it gets bracketed. Something like the fetid bloat drone is now a staple for me, whether it be bloat drones or blight haulers, depending how I'm feeling. But the bloat drones just do so incredibly well with that 10 inch move and fly. Um, if your opponent goes first and does push out into the board, they can often give you a charge because the drone can hide behind something, make use of its full 10 inch move and uh, fly, and then often make a reasonable charge. You're not necessarily going to get it every time, but there's the opportunity to push for that charge. And when I have done that and it's come off, uh, it's often been a deciding factor, removing an obsec troop choice from the opponent very early in the game, suddenly making the primary that bit more of a commitment for them. And the Bane Blade or the, the Falchion, whilst they could shoot a unit off the board like that, they don't have that way to get into the enemy and get behind that cover. They can only hope to shoot through it if the opponent is touching into that ruin. So for me, I've really struggled to put this into a list uh, and, and maintain that fun. For me, it's not about whether the list can win in an all comers. You know, if I fight something that's just going to beat Death Guard, then it is what it is. It can still be fun to see what it does. But it just really isn't the way that I want to play my Death Guard. That 600 points is another two, potentially three squads of Plague Marines or Death Shroud or Blight Lords that I can be using to control the board and force my opponent to make some decisions. Sadly, the big super heavies here we're talking about don't benefit from the Poxmonger's abilities. So we're not going to be able to allow them to shoot that blast weapon with the stratagem. We're not going to be able to give them a four-up inball. And sadly, if, if either of those things were written as machine spirit rather than um, demon engine as well, um, that would be great and would actually be a reason for me to, to want to slot them in the list and just make it more of a Poxmonger's vibe. But given the Poxmonger's focus on demon engines... That just doesn't really feel like a specific play company that want to take one of these super heavy tanks. The Death Guard need to move forward. If you don't use your movement in the first two turns, you'll be stuck in your half of the board the entire game. Your opponent will just shoot off the closest units and deny you from entering their half of the board. And that makes it incredibly easy for them to try and control the primary and just force you out of the game on points, which again is where the Death Guard shine in my opinion. That durability, if you make use of that movement early in the game, just leaves your opponent needing to shut off units. And if you're spending all these points on a tank that doesn't pose that threat, sure, they might dedicate firepower into it, but they're essentially removing two, three, four units that you would have had by removing just that one because it's virtually 600 points. It doesn't expand any of your options to score either, sadly. On the Death Guard secondaries, it isn't going to be spread in the sickness. It doesn't have any plague weapons, though it could help you uh, trigger a morale failure in the back line that you might not have otherwise reached. So flea vectors, it's a bit of a to and, to and fro, a bit of give and take there. Um, and then Despoiled Grounds isn't the strongest of the Death Guard secondaries, but I do pick it from time to time if I've got a lot of units. And again, if you're taking a big super heavy for 600 points, you're just not going to have that many units. So it feels to me like it, it really rules out everything um, other than if you really commit to that infantry um you know, perhaps many uh, units of pox walkers cheaply to maximize your odds of scoring well on the spread the sickness. As with any shooting unit, that besides those with the uh, the ability to barrage out of line of sight, it needs to get line of sight, and in the process, it exposes itself. Realistically, you don't want to leave it on the front line in case you end up going second and you just give your opponent, if they're a shooting army, a full turn to unload into it with all their long-range weapons and put it into a position where it's already bracketed and you're now either spending CP to make it worth shooting or simply taking what you get and spending 600 points for half that value in shooting. 
The on-paper options there, if I was coming up against a Death Guard list with, say, a Bane Blade or a Falchion out in the open, realistically, that is probably the best target to shoot with my anti-tank weapons, because unlike the rest of the army, it's not minus one damage. Now, with certain weapons, you know, we're talking las cannon type weapons, bright lances, dark lances, multi-melters or melters, the damage on them being either D6 or D3 plus 3 means that minus 1 isn't always that big a detriment. But if, you, if you're firing just a standard melter, not in half range, into a unit of Death Shroud, firstly, you've got to get past that 4-up invuln, but also they're going to be reducing that damage by 1, so half of the damage results don't even kill a Death Shroud. Once you're in half range, fair enough, the Death Shroud become a much better pick because... Even rolling a 1 isn't the worst case, you do put them down to 1 health. Uh, but a 2 up on the damage will outright kill 1. Whereas with the Baneblade or the Falchion, you're going to be taking great big chunks of damage. Of course, the phone would go off. You're going to be taking great big chunks of damage out of that Baneblade every turn. And again, incrementally taking it closer to that bracketing where you force the opponent to spend to make it usable or simply waste the turn's worth of shooting because they're only hitting on fives and there's no support for those rerolls. So for me, it seems like a fun idea if you really want to commit to a shooting Death Guard army, but it just doesn't feel fun to me to do that for the Death Guard. There are some great factions out there that would love a super heavy tank. For me, the likes of Iron Hands or Iron Warriors in the Space Marines both spring to mind. The Guard obviously love a Super Heavy, um, but even something like Sisters, I, I believe they can access them in the same way, would benefit from having you know, a Super Heavy tank in the front line because they've got those fast trading units that don't necessarily need to remain up the board. They just need to touch in, mess with your ability to score for a little bit, and then die open up the way for those big guns to shoot in again and then throw another unit at you in their charge phase. So there are some great units out there, uh, sorry, great armies out there that would love to benefit from this sort of thing. But with having no way to heal the super heavy and only really being able to pay to make it back up to top profile just makes it feel too weak to me. And even with the minus one to hit in there, there are some armies that don't care about that particularly. And through weight of fire, you could still take enough damage that you suffer. Two up armor of contempt is still good, but with armor of contempt being so widespread, the high AP weapons are a staple for many warlords, well, many generals when they're putting their list together because they know that if they come up against Armor of Contempt, they need a way to chew through those elite threats. So you've got to expect you're going to see some multi-melters, you're going to see some las cannons, you're going to see bright lances, dark lances, prismatic cannons, whatever you want to do. Um, so playing a unit that just gets a target painted on its back to me, just feels like you're putting yourself up against it to begin with. Now, if you are playing a game, let's just say against like a, a chapter Marines. Um, I have a friend who plays Raven Guard and Death Guard are a hard counter to that. I think running a super heavy in that against Raven Guard, where they're getting their extra cover and they get to use their rules, would be a fun game. But that's because Death Guard stomp Raven Guard at the moment because they just don't really have a great set of rules. So if I was playing that matchup and I had a super heavy sat there to play with, then I'd probably bring it just for the fun. But if I'm looking to play a game to, you know, play against an army that has played into Death Guard, it just isn't my style. So whilst I haven't given this one a go, and I would be quite happy to hear your opinions of when you might have used them and how you feel about how they slot into a list it just doesn't feel like they're a death guard unit to me and if you want a super heavy take the primarch he complements the army he's a beat stick in melee and he has all those juicy psychic powers to really mess with the opponent and also be that big target whilst having a four up invul against most armies that don't just ignore that but at least for the most part some of those are in melee, and that's where he wants to be anyway. So he's not 
too upset about losing his invul. As long as he doesn't die and he can hit them back, he may well get the better end of that trade sometimes as well. Well, that's it for the Super Heavies. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any suggestions of any other units or any other concepts you'd like a video on, please do let me know. I'd be delighted to indulge. Um, it was mentioned about a feculent normal, so I will be taking a look at those in the near future. But again, if there's anything else you want to touch on, please do let me know. Uh, I am planning to do a Terminus Est one, but again, it just really interrupts the way I want to play the game and just doesn't feel terribly fun to me even though it's thematic but i am making a concerted effort to try and rejig a terminus s list over and over until i can find a way that i can both use what it brings and enjoy it because at the moment i'm just really really enjoying power armor and just mass plague marines and death shroud and spells and mortal wounds here and there is just feeling so thematically death guard to me at the moment um, and the pox walkers previously I understand the matchup was was very rough for me, but I played several Chaos Space Marine games in a row. There was always obliterators, and they just deleted my Pox Walkers every game as soon as they were in range. So I've taken them out now. It's not to say that they wouldn't delete the Plague Marines in the same way, but at least they have a save uh, in most cases. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm leaning into the power armor at the minute, which could be a way of going down the Terminus S route, but I just can't quite get it to line up in a way that feels like I'm doing justice to the Terminus S, but also doing the units that I want to use. Uh, so I'll give that another few goes, and we'll, we'll see if I can get um, some play from the Terminus S, and we will look at that as well in the future. For those of you that have stuck around to the end, I am going to be doing a stream later today. I'm going to be playing some Mechanicus. Um, so that should be live around about the time this video is live. So if you do watch it all the way to the end, you could always jump in and check out some Mechanicus content live. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time in the Underhive.